I'm Am Stockhill. Um, Am is for AM, my initials. Um, I just got shortened to Am. And um, I am currently from Montana, but I've kind of lived all over the place. All right, so what I do, the process that I use when I'm doing these paintings, um, I look for old books that are about at least 100 years old. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. And one of the reasons for that is they used uh, a different paper process. The older book pages have less acidity in the process, and so they actually last a lot longer than the newer pages would. Um, they have less chemicals in the ink and less chemicals. They actually use different wood while they were doing the pulp process. So these are actually longer lasting, and I really want to make sure that all of my paintings are well preserved for a long time. And so I take a lot of precautions to make sure that these are going to be something that's more, more of an heirloom, something that's more historical. Um, so, you know, I use a clear acrylic medium that's specifically designed for preserving old book pages um, and old paper, keeping everything intact and, and kind of protecting it from some sun damage and skin oils. And I use that clear medium to bind it to the canvas. And then once I have that sealed in there, there's about a dozen layers of acrylic paint. And I use my acrylic like a watercolor. So I'm building up the process very, very slowly. And I start with just light, light washes. And I'm building up these pigments so slowly because I want the pigment to be a part of the paper, not just sitting on top of the paper. I want it to be involved. And the areas that are really dark have up to a dozen layers of paint on them. And I, I kind of feel like, like these different colors and the different variations in color. You know, it may look like mostly the same color, but these are all different colors. And what that does is it creates more of a depth and a roundness to it that you wouldn't get if you used paint out of the tube or something like that. And um, after I have the figures on, I start doing washes of pigment, some lighter washes, putting things kind of back into history and back into the canvas, and kind of splatters, things like that. And um, then when I'm happy with it, there's about four or five coats of a varnish on them that protects against sun damage and skin oils. So they're really preserved. Whereas, you know, you look at, um, you look at a new book, you go buy a paperback book in, you know, Borders or whatever it is, and the paper that they use is such a different process and different pulp. So you put that out in your, your yard or in, in, you know, on the dashboard of your car for a week, and it's going to be yellowed and fading. Whereas these papers have already been around for 100 years, they're not fading. As I walked into a used bookstore and they had just gotten a donation, boxes and boxes of books, and they were sorting through them to decide which ones they were going to sell and which ones, um, which ones weren't worth anything to collectors, things like that. They had a stack on the side that had the, the spines were missing and the covers were coming off and pages were missing on the inside. And they had this stack over there and I asked what they were going to do with it. And they said, well, it's not worth anything to collectors, so we're most likely going to toss them out. And I couldn't let that happen. Mm -hmm. So I took them home and uh, they sat in my studio for about six months before I figured out what to do with them. I just kept, I knew that I couldn't let them go in the trash, and I love books, I love books, but um, couldn't let them go in the trash, and I figured that's kind of our, our history that I think as a culture, as a young culture, we kind of lose so much of our history so easily, and I think that this is a way to preserve that and, and kind of make it into art and history at the same time. And I always use books that are already falling apart, um, because, I mean, I have friends that are book collectors, and uh, they would, I would get in so much trouble if, if I tore apart a book that was, you know, first edition, you know, a great book. Um, 
And so, you know, I'm, I'm saving the books that are destined to be tossed out anyway. I didn't do any painting at all until I was in college. I had never picked up acrylic or oil at all until college. And uh, I don't know, I, I went into college, I went to the University of Montana, and I went in there thinking that I was going to do photography. And I um, had a couple of really good mentors in painting classes that, you know, something just clicked for me. So when I graduated, I pretty much sold everything I had, packed everything I had, and started working in a two-car garage, and, you know, four or five years later, here I am. This is what I do every day of my life. And, I don't think I could be happier. Okay, now this one, it's kind of hard to tell with the video, and, and it's definitely hard to tell when I f take photographs of these, but um, they have up to a dozen layers of different textural mediums, like crackle paste and pumice gel and modeling paste, and I just keep building up the layers and building up the layers until I'm happy with it. And then once I'm happy with the texture, I gesso it and prime it to get it ready to receive paint and then there's up to 30 layers of paint on top and I again it's thin washes of acrylic paint so you know some of these you know started out with blues and reds in the background and some of my other pieces started out bright yellow where you can't see those those colors now but the reason I do that is because with the thin washes of pigment, it starts to give it a more luminous depth. I don't know how to, don't know how to explain that at all. But um, and so anyway, about after I have about two dozen layers of paint on there, then I start going in and seeing what I see, and and building up the figures and building up the pigment of the figures, and those again take layer after layer of paint. And, and then I usually do a couple washes over the top to push things into the background. And the reason I started doing this, I spent some time in, um, in Arizona and New Mexico, and I was really, really inspired by seeing the cliff dwellings and seeing the petroglyphs. So incredible. And so I thought that that was kind of a way to bring, to bring history and nature inside. Anyway, so the first couple of this series were more like petroglyphs. And you know the the horses were done in a more um, a more primitive style, and then I just started incorporating my own ideas into it. And again, these have these have the same uh, four or five layers of varnish on them that protect against sun damage and skin oils. And the reason for that is because I actually want people to be able to touch these a little bit. I think that that's part of the experience. And I love it because children walk up to these paintings and they touch them and their mothers and fathers are going, oh no. <laughs> and it's actually, you know, the, I think that children are the most honest critics that you have. Um, they're not gonna lie to you if they don't like something. And if they really like something, that's the most honest compliment you can ever get. And so I wanted, that that experience, you know, children want to put their hands on something. I wanted that to be possible for adults too. And so that's why I, I take so much care to protect against skin oils and, and sun damage and everything. I think I always knew that I wasn't, I wasn't really designed to work a nine to five job. And I'm, I don't think I'm really happy unless I'm creating something. And I have so many different ideas, and, and I have so many different styles of artwork that, you know, I'm, I do everything from illustrating children's books to large abstract paintings to smaller watercolor paintings. So I do a little bit of everything because I'm just, I think I'm, I'm just happiest when I'm creating something, and if I create something that someone else likes as much as I do, that's so satisfying. I, I think it's the best thing. It's the only thing I could imagine myself doing for the rest of my life. So.